Car purists used to complain when sports car manufacturers made SUVs, but that ship, my friends, has well and truly sailed. Now, Aston Martin is the latest to throw its hat in the ring with this, the DBX. Now, the car isn't completely finished yet, but Aston Martin have flown me out here to the wonderful country of Oman to drive the prototype and get a sample of what the car will be like. This may be a prototype, but we have already had a look at the finished design of the car. Henry got to spend some time with it, and you can see its looks in uncamouflaged glory in our film on it elsewhere on YouTube. The DBX certainly follows suit with other manufacturers, retaining some of the hallmarks of design language, while stretching and bulging the bodywork to accommodate a more practical interior and rugged body height. The unmistakable front end couldn't be anything other than an Aston, and even though the rear looks a little fussy, shall we say, you can see a lot of the current lineup of sports cars in there. The interior, especially when specced in the tan colour we previously saw it in, really shows off how much the full cabin experience means to Aston Martin for the DBX, bringing a higher level of luxury front and rear than we've ever seen before in an Aston. Legroom, boot space, as well as storage space in the cabin are in abundance. The leather-clad dash and doors look exquisite, and the driving position, while elevated, still feels sports car-like. But all of that is absolutely for nothing if it doesn't drive well. And although it will be quite a few months before we get to drive the full production version of the car, this drive out on some of Oman's rougher roads should start to give me a bit of a clue. Now, paradoxically, driving this feels both weird and familiar. It's weird because I'm hustling an Aston Martin down a gravel road, and there's nothing about that sentence that makes any sense. But it's familiar in that it's the same feeling that I had when I drove Bentayga or Cullinan or Urus, and frankly, it's a more common occurrence now than ever before. It's something that happens so frequently, in fact, that I shouldn't be surprised that it exists at all. Now, this is a prototype, so it's not the final car. The steering, the suspension, everything is still being dialed in. But immediately, this does suggest that you're going to get an Aston Martin sports car feel from an SUV. Now, you've got the same Vantage powertrain, but you're carrying several hundred kilos extra in weight. 2,248 kilograms of weight, in fact. But that turbocharged V8 with 542 brake horsepower and 516 pounds-feet of torque is more than up for the task, taking the DBX from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds and all the way up to 181 miles an hour. Power flows through Aston Martin's first ever 9-speed transmission. That combination allows for effortless motorway cruising, but when you want it, the ability to put your foot down and enjoy that power. That power, by default, is sent completely to the rear wheels, which keeps that sense of a front-engine rear-wheel drive sports car right up to the moment the car needs more power sent to the front, which can go up to 50-50 front-to-rear torque distribution. And although you do feel that weight, the places you're going to use this car, well, they don't really compare. I'm not going to take advantage out on a gravel road like this. So really, it's more fair to compare it to other cars in the high performance SUV sector. So imagine the Bentayga and the Urus, for example. Price wise, the DBX is going to sit right along those two, but it's not going to be as soft and plush as the Bentayga, nor as crazy and outlandish as the Urus. It's going to sit somewhere in between. You're going to get a very sports car orientated car with enough off-roading and comfort and practicality elements to kind of satisfy both sides of the equation. Aston Martin have built this on their own custom-made platform, new to this car. And you don't build a new platform just for one car. It's a real statement of intent from Aston Martin. It really shows that they're committing to this 100%. It's not just a one-off car to get them out of a hole they might be in now, a quick smash and grab to get some extra cash in the bank to keep the sports car division going. No, they've committed to this fully, and I would be surprised if we didn't start to see more cars built on this platform in the very near future. Out on normal roads, the DBX cruises just fine, thanks partly to that gearbox. NVH wasn't in its final spec in this prototype, but expect it to ride fairly quietly by the time it hits roads for real. The seating position doesn't feel overly high, and because it's trimmed wonderfully like an Aston should, you should, for a while, forget you're actually driving an SUV. 
The suspension features double wishbones at the front and multi-link at the rear with three chamber air suspension setup as well as active dampers and a 48 volt anti-roll system. Basically that means that depending on how the car is set up it could handle as rock firm as a track car or like a boat. In the final production version the car's available settings will undoubtedly be incredibly well selected from a range from quite compliant to somewhat firm. In this prototype, the modes available gave a certain degree of body roll, which was extremely welcome to help feel the weight moving around at speed. The driving modes on offer are slightly different to those we're used to in Aston's. Instead of dealing in the chassis and drivetrain individually, you're now presented with more fixed modes to move through, from Terrain Plus on one side to Sports Plus on the other. That didn't feel like too much of a restriction, as even on these prototypes, these modes seem well suited to the different driving terrains. Out on normal roads, the Sport and Sport Plus modes did exactly what you'd expect, lowering, tightening, and generally giving a more engaging drive. Throwing it around on good quality tarmac was an absolute delight. The Terrain and Terrain Plus modes are for the most challenging of off-road environments, lifting the car to its tallest height and softening the suspension accordingly. However, our off-road experience was limited to rocky gravel, where the standard drive mode was more than capable. So, what's my opinion on the DBX? Well, considering it was still an early-ish prototype and it was simultaneously being used to develop the electronics and the final configuration of the DBX, it was, frankly, what I expected. This wasn't my first rodeo, as they say, and having spent many years now driving different manufacturers' first attempts at SUVs, it wasn't hard to predict what Aston Martin had to do. It had to take all of the practicality features of an SUV, which it absolutely does, while retaining the design touches that are unique to the mark, which it also does, while delivering a driving experience that feels as much like a sports car as possible, while giving the flexibility to take it where no sports car should ever go. The DBX is all of that. It's nothing more either. It's not reinventing the SUV. Rather, Aston Martin has carefully selected a slot for it in the marketplace and designed the car to fit it perfectly. Questions like, should they have made an SUV, are so obsolete these days that it has become laughable. But it's great to see that Aston Martin has taken it really seriously and thrown absolutely everything they have at the DBX to make it the absolute best it can be. And frankly, that's what it's going to take, because if this car isn't a hit, there'll be some serious question marks over Aston Martin's future. For us mere mortals, the DB cars went straight from 9 to 11. And unless you were James Bond, you did not get to drive a DB10. But maybe with the DBX, this is our chance to drive that missing car. In fact, maybe there'll be a point at which we consider the SUVs to be such a natural part of the Aston Martin lineup that we will have forgotten a time when they didn't make them. The DB letters, when Aston Martin started using them, stood for David Brown, a man who secured Aston Martin's safety for years and years to come. Now this car, the DBX, has got that same job. Now will this SUV save Aston Martin and make it successful for years and years to come? Well, if today's driving is anything to go by, it just might well be.